Today, I'm gonna to show you four different ways to cut dovetails. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. First method is going to be nothing but hand tools. So I went ahead and built up some walnut, which means I planed it, I cut it, I jointed it, and I resawed it. Resawn? Resawed? Resawn? Resawed. Anyway, I got half inch walnut that is four inches wide. Here we go. The first of the three methods will be the hard way by hand. So we're gonna mark our pin boards and our tail boards. Now we're gonna set our marking gauge to the thickness of our board, which is a half inch. And this little indentation is gonna give us a place to set our chisel and our saw. This is much more accurate than using a pencil line. On this four inch board, I want three tails. So on this one side, I'm going to mark where I want my half pin to be. So now I'm gonna take my dividers and I wanna figure out this space here. And I want three tails, so I wanna go three swings and land on that line. So it's gonna take a couple times. So there's one, two, three, too big. We'll bring it in, one, two, Three. So now that I have my dividers set, I'm going to make an indentation with the points. So I'm gonna make that first one, one, two, and three. And I'm gonna do the same thing from the other side, three. I'm going to take a marking knife and I'm going to stick it in the hole, bring up my square till it touches the knife and scribe a line. And I'm gonna do that with all six holes. I don't cut dovetails very often and I don't plan to cut dovetails very often. So I am going to use this Cat's Moses dovetail jig. This is like training wheels. This is gonna help me get the saw at the correct angle. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't use a jig to cut dovetails. Those people are jerks. I'm going to lay my saw down into that marked line that we made earlier and just push forward a little bit to give my saw a little groove to set in. I'm gonna bring the dovetail jig up to my saw and it's gonna angle it at the perfect angle and I'm gonna let the weight of the saw do the work. I'm not going to push on it. And this jig has some magnets that pulls that saw into itself. I have the outside facing me, so I'm going to saw down until I hit my line. And then on the other side, I can tilt the saw this way and go down until I hit that line. I got those three cut, so I can flip the board around and do three more. Next, we can use a coping saw to remove the waste of the middle two pins. So now I'm gonna remove the two ends by flipping this over, putting it in the vise, and I can use the shoulder side of the jig as a guide to cut straight down. Flip it over, do the same thing. Now I can remove the remaining waste by putting my chisel right into that scribed line and then chiseling down halfway through. So on this other side, you can work out the middle just by hand and your chisel. So now I can put my pin board into the vise, use the tails as I just cut to scribe with a marking knife. So this is gonna be our waste. This is gonna be our waste and this is gonna be our waste. And again, I'm gonna use the jig as my training wheels, cut right on the line. And again, we're gonna take our coping saw, remove bulk of the waste with this and then clean up with the chisel. And then just clean out the middle. Usually they don't go together first time and you might have a little bit of cleanup. It is a little tight, I can see. I need to remove a little bit right here. Doesn't take a lot of glue because dovetails are naturally strong. If you're anything like me, you probably have some gaps to fill. So we're gonna throw some glue and sawdust in there. That came out really good. Even though I'm not great at cutting dovetails, filling those gaps with sawdust and glue made it look profesh. This is the second method. This is probably my least favorite. I just don't like handheld routers. They scare me, they're loud, and they're messy. And then there's a lot of time of setting up the jigs. All the dovetail jigs are kind of the same. This is the Rockler one. I like this because it has a bunch of accessories. I went ahead and I drew a line, the thickness of the board on here. So I can go ahead and clamp this in the jig and I center it between the fingers on here. I already went through all the setup. The funny thing about this is, by the time you set this up, you could have cut a set of hand cut dovetails 
by hand. But once you get this set up, you can you can blow through dovetails all day. So if you're making like kitchen cabinets or a bathroom vanity, which I am going to do here in a couple weeks, I will be using this. Then you take your router, you got your eight degree dovetail bit, and you got to set the depth to that line that you drew on there. This dovetail jig comes with this bit and this bushing. The bushing is going to ride along the rails here on this jig. So now we're just gonna cut away. This is messy. I don't have my dust collection set up since I'm just doing two quick cuts on a couple of small boards. Now it's time to cut the pins. That means I had to swap out the tail insert for the pin insert. And then I had to put a straight bit in my router still with the guide bushing in there. Then I had to set the height to the line scribed on my board. And again, I'm just going to carve everything out. Now these are through dovetails. If you do half blind dovetails, you don't have to swap out the inserts and you don't have to swap bits. You do them both at the same time. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do for the bathroom vanity coming up in a couple of weeks. Half the setup, half the time, so much easier with a jig like this. I, this is actually my very first time cutting through dovetails on this particular jig, just cause it takes so long and I could do it faster by hand. And holy cow, that came out absolutely perfect. I mean. That's what I'm doing right now. All right. So let's pull this out. A lot of times you have to make a cut, see how tight it is and adjust this part of the jig either forward or back. So let's see. It is a little bit too tight, which means I need to move the template a hair that way away from me and we'll do it again. You always want to do this on scrap first. And that came out really, really good. Let me throw some finish on there. We have the hand cut dovetail and the router template dovetail. We've got one more, which is actually my favorite because I just recently learned how to do it. But before we get to that, I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor and that is Squarespace. If you're like me, you're probably a maker or a woodworker or a metal worker or an artist or a photographer or just somebody who's creative. You need a website. It's 2022. You need a website, you need a place to show off your work, you need a place to host your work so you can gather new clients. Maybe you wanna sell some of those things that you make. Maybe, I say maybe a lot, maybe you want a membership area of your website, you can do that with Squarespace. Let's say you wanna have a members only, why, why, what's up with my arms just flinging around? Cool it, Petruto. Maybe you want a members only website where you can have like-minded people come and share ideas, or you could teach people how to do something like this. Squarespace is the perfect place to do so. I've been using Squarespace for many years, long before they were a sponsor. That is because a friend of mine turned me on. I mean, I used to be a web developer. I, I used to dive into the code and I used to do that for a living. A friend of mine, what's up, Jordan? I know you're out there. A friend of mine, Jordan, turned me on to Squarespace and said, focus more on your business and stop wasting time making your website. And so I did. And makesomething.com has been a Squarespace site for years. So visit squarespace.com. And when you're ready to launch, visit squarespace.com slash make something for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. There'll be links down below. Thank you for Squarespace for making this video possible. Now let's get to my third and new favorite way to cut dovetails. This is so nerdy and fun, but I love it. Check this out. So this third way is at the CNC. And this is my most favorite because I recently had a couple aha moments. And right now this is just the most fun for me. It's complicated at the CNC. You have to have vertical clamping 
and you have to use two bits just like we did with the router jig. There is a dovetail gadget for VCAR, but it's not a true dovetail and it just uses one bit. It doesn't even really look like a dovetail. For a true dovetail, you gotta do the vertical clamping and you have to use two different bits. Laney Shaughnessy has an amazing two hour long live video on how to cut dovetails at the CNC. It is just full of so much good information. And I had a couple aha moments and he uses VCAR to draw everything out. And I come up with a simplified version for myself using Illustrator and a few less tool paths than what he uses. He adds extra tool paths to prevent blowout, but I found if I just slow things down enough and I get a really sharp bit, I don't get any blowout and this works great. So if you wanna see a video on the full process of how to do this for you CNC nerds like me, I will make a video on that, but say we're just going to simplify it. So the very first thing I had to do was I had to put in a bit that I'm not even going to use that has a point on there so I can find the zero point, the datum of my work piece. And I have that vertically clamped in here in my vertical clamp. And then I have this board double-sided taped right here. And this is just a reference board. So this will set my height and this will also set my, my left point here for the next board. So I have a dovetail bit in the router. I drew this up in Illustrator, imported that into VCarve. It's just gonna do one straight path five times through this board. Without further ado, let's get started. I count really, really good. That is so fast. Once you get the setup, you could do this all day. You gotta make sure your clamps aren't going to get in the way of your tool path. So now we're gonna swap out for the straight bit and put our other board in there. And you see CNC, you could see the very simple tool path that we had here. So now I am going to load up the tool path for the second cut using the straight bit, open that up. So we got that loaded up. I had to re-zero my height, but my X and Y will stay exactly the same since I had the clamping jig in there. It leaves some little fuzzies there, so I just sand those down real quick. I must have my speeds and feeds dialed in because there's no backing board on there, but there's no blowout. So if you got a nice sharp bit and you go nice and slow. And I got one more that uses this guy. This is a handheld router, but it's got computer brains in there. It's basically a CNC that you run by hand. It doesn't allow you to screw up. If you go outside the lines, it'll pull the bit up. So you can create paths just like a normal CNC and import it into the machine. This is called the Shaper Origin. The people over at Shaper Tools created this Fusion 360 file where you can go and change your parameters, your width and the thickness of the wood, and it will calculate the path for you and you bring it in here and I have this companion jig that goes with the machine I can vertically clamp my pieces in there and cut pins and tails all day this thing has a camera built into it and it reads these domino shapes so it knows where it's at in the world I've got a whole video on this guy if you want to know more about it once I have my file set, I can import them into the machine and then vertically clamp my tails piece to the jig, install the dovetail bit just like we did at the CNC, run that path, and then I'm going to put my pins piece into the jig, install a straight bit, and run that path. Crazy bonkers. The CNC is the most fun for me just because it's new and I overcame some obstacles and it was just kind of fun to figure out. The hand one is also very satisfying and it's great to know that I can do this by hand. I've got three videos on cutting dovetails by hand. The first one is just five minutes long and it's a quick refresher for you. The second one goes into a lot more detail and that is with Jonathan Katz Moses in there. And the third one is also with Jonathan Katz Moses and we do this really crazy inlaid dovetail thing. It's bonkers but it's actually not that hard. And I have a full video on using the Rockler dovetail jig, but not for full through dovetails. I, it's for the half blind dovetails, which I mentioned earlier is a lot quicker and easier. And I got a full video explaining that process. There is some special software that you can get for the CNC that is just for cutting dovetails. You plug in your bit degree and number of dovetails that you want, and it figures out all the calculations for you. Now, if you want to spend the money for that, 
that's awesome. I just wanted to figure out how to do it without buying some special software. So that is going to wrap it up. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. I have links to all of the detailed videos to all of these dovetail, 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 hitting the sauce. I have links to all the videos. I will have links to all the detailed videos down below. Slow down, Petruto. That's it. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something.